Hello there. If you are tired from copy and paste somebody else settings inside of the forum and want to understand how all of these motions and all this works, then this video is for you. So let's go ahead first before we start working with the forum. We want to be sure it's installed. If you don't see the top on your on automatic 1111 installation where it says the forum, that we need to go and install this plugin or extension. For this, we're going to tab extensions, going to the tab called available. Click on a load from. This is, will bring all the list of the ex available extensions. Going inside the search and type the forum. It will search to all of them and bring one that we needed. It should say the forum tab animations install it. Click on install it if you don't, if it's showing. In my case, it says install it because I already did install that. After this, it should take a little bit time. Next, I recommend go inside the install it and click for check for updates. In this case, it will come up and tell you which is extensions need to be updated because they constantly do update it. In my case, I have it after Photoshop plugin, which I don't want to update right now. And also I have it one for control net. That is we okay to use the old one. If you need it, you can click apply and restart. And this way you have it latest code. In many cases, when you do here, you maybe need to restart your server as well. After this, let's go inside the settings and in settings on the left side, go to the forum section, which is open settings for us. Here is the most important setting for us. It is correct path to FFmpeg. To install FFmpeg, if you not have yet, Go to ffmpeg.org. I will provide link down in descriptions. Going to download and just download in your machine and install it. Another things also I notice, and it's don't happen to everyone, but it's happened in my case. After I install it, I would require to restart my all OS for the settings take effect for the mmmpeg. Otherwise, it wasn't find it at all. After all this completed, I want to be sure this path for the FFmpeg execution file, it's have the right path. Rest, I will leave it as default. And only if you need it, you can also remember that is you have the forum preset settings, just in case if you want to save all settings in the forum, which I'll show you where to save and why reason you want to do this. After this, you maybe need to restart your server again, but let's assume everything okay. After this, click Apply Settings, and all the settings, if you modify any, should be accepted in your system. After this, click on Reload UI, and it should reread all that information. In our the Forum tab, we also have sub-tabs, and we'll have it even more as they nested one in, inside another one. First, on the top, you'll notice right here, we have a drop-down with very helpful information if you need to find how to work. The documentation is actually very good and provide good information, but I find out personally sometimes video help me better. And that's the reason why we're recording this. So let's look down what we have. We have the first tab run with our generic information about all what we need to set up. Notice on the top I'm using RPG version 4, the checkpoint or model, and it's selected from top. Because I'm using this specific model, it is have specifically a requirement for the best result. One of them, it's actually one to use a sampler recommended DPM++ to as a cars. So and I'm selecting this as a sampler. Also, we have its steps. As a test, we can leave it as 25, but it does recommend to use anyway from 50 to 75. So eventually I will change these steps when I will be ready to actually create and generate output. Next, we have our width and height. I know for that uh, PG V4 was trained on 512 by 768, and that's what I'm going to use it, height 768. You also can change in this time if you want like widescreen or um, ultra wide or any other format, you can put it right in this place. Notice below we have a seed. And we can minus one by default. It's a mean random seed for everything. If we want a little bit consistency, we can put it to specific seed. However, I don't recommend to use this seed. 
if your camera is going to rotate or um, twist zoom, then seed won't be performed as well. As you have it, images of the person, just maybe straightforward face, looking around or dancing, something very static without camera move, then you want to put it seed in. Otherwise, it will create additional artifacts for us. Also below, we have the restore faces, tiling, and enable uh, schedule. Restore faces will execute um, access specific extensions, which is also going and fix faces. In most cases with some model like RPG4, we don't need to do this, but you always can apply if you feel like. And tiling, it's good for um, panoramic action. When you have your camera, move it from maybe left to right. You can add tiling, otherwise you may have it lines. But right now we'll just leave it like this. Let's go next our to keyframes and keyframes. It's one of the most intense session section because you'll notice right here. We have it already some settings on top. We have a 2D, 3D or video, all additional properties as well. Below we have it some string CFG and below motion, noise, coherence, anti blur and deep warping. So we have it a lot of properties around here. First, let's go from the top. 2D motions will apply how we can uh, move the canvas. So notice what I was saying, like, for example, if we have it in 3D, we won't rotate the camera around, we'll just rotate canvas around the camera or positioning. So 2D will provide for us X and Y. It will go only in two dimensions. If we switch to 3D, then we'll add another third dimension. And then notice right here, it's change. Z, we have a rotation on Z, translation on the Z, so we add additional dimension. If you need a little bit more visual how the settings work, I will provide for you a link to this documentation. And if you scroll down right there, you will see 3D dimensions, which is actually help you with what X axis will do. You'll pinch, you go up and down. What is a white does and what is a Z does. So for example, Z, dimension it will rule around kind of camera and as well we have it here our translations x y and z so it's a little bit nicer visual information but also i'll show you a little bit in the videos when i create demos for this as well and if we switch to video notice it will ignore all motion information we um, have it it will start to reference videos about location motion animations and it will be analysis so this way it's kind of nice if you have it some video there you recorded anyone just overlay motions match this video in our case we'll just go and use it 3d because it will provide for us some of these um, options for x y and z so we can use it okay if we go to next we'll notice right here border type we have it a replicate and we have it a warp the use of this is depend on the speed and how you move it for example replicate it's nice if you have it static or slightly very slow motion then it will take some pixels to replicate them however if you have it a very fast motion you will have it lines going too like examples you can see in this video you can see as motion going and now we have it this line start coming and this is happening because it's going very fast. On this case, we want to switch to the warp. So it will take an image from one and kind of extend it. On this case, from one side to another, and it's create a little bit better movements. However, switch to the warp, uh, warp. it's not necessarily will prevent from this because you may still have it lines sometimes. On this case, we need work a little bit more with the um, randomization of the noise and also with the speed but general just keep in mind replicate it will be nice to work with the slow movements and if we have it a little bit too fast you want to switch to the warp or if you have it more intense kind of movements on your camera okay next let's go on a canyons and this is what happened when you have it multiple frames so what is meaning we have it like one frame and a second frame and third frame will create We'll create frame between those two frames, but we'll apply like one merge on top and other ones with semi-transparency. So it will have it frame one, frame two will be blend between frame one and three, and it's this great. The reason is if you're creating this, you kind of cut in a half almost render time, 
is just to speed up. And if you have it fast motions or you have just some animations, in many cases you won't see it. However, if you want very sharp and good images, you want to create every frame. Mostly, personally, I almost always use it just one frame. It's take a little bit longer, but it's creating much better quality. Next, we'll go to the string. Okay, I almost skip right here the max frames, and that is actually how long is our animations. In some cases, max frame will be ignored if you're using video input, but here you can put it how many frames you want it. It does not mean how long will be your animations because how length of your animations will depend how many frames you have it and when you go to output tab how many frames per second so for example if we have a 12 frames per second and our keyframes at 120 it's meaning we will have a 10 seconds of animation so and if we're putting our 24 for example here 24 frames which is Normal would do for the video if you do on motion and 120 it's mean we'll have it only five seconds of animations but this is will also depend de determine how many frames it will create it okay so let's go down below right now we're going to the string and this is will be affecting how much of previous frame affecting new it's almost like when you're using image to image and you said how much of previous image should affect on other image. For example, right here with the file settings, and you can see you can recognize even trees is changing, but you kind of can recognize them as it's zooming in. And if you have this value too low, for example, the frames does not affect at all, like to the zero, you can have this kind of effect, which is almost every frame is different because they don't based on some previously. It's meaning if you want to create consistent information, this is kind of fine tuning between have it a very fast, um, sorry, it's have it very close look to what previous, or you have it a little bit more flexibility. Usually six, uh, zero, six, five work okay, but sometimes you want to play around to find. I found when you have a rotation or a zoom motion, you have a little bit more flexibility, then you can increase. Usually when it's beginning animations in this kind of based on theory of animations, you want slow ease in. Maybe you heard about this terminology. When you zoom started, you want slowly cause zoom in starting after acceleration. Then it's meaning we can work with frames. And as I bring frames, you'll notice on the top front, we have a zero column. Zero first number, it will represent what frame we want to have at action. Column, separate the value. For example, right here in the strings, we'll say at zero, we want string that based on image zero five. So next, for example, I want to decrease this and I'll say after is in comma and on frame 12. And again, if we're going back to our output and we'll say we have 12 frames per second, this is meaning and one after one second, I want the string maybe drop to 0 0.5 provide a little bit more flexibility on creation and so on you can create it keep in mind that it does not mean this is will start at this time this is all um, accelerating so it's meaning frame 10 it will be 0 0.6 or uh, frame 6 will be 0 0.6 because between them so it won't be jump at this it will be a linear accelerations if you want jump in then you need to put it to one another frame like for example frame 10 where we can specify 0 0.65 which is same value as before in this case it's meaning from this to this frame we have a consistent speed and from this speed we accelerating and on frame 12 we should use in 0 0.5 this will apply to almost all motions and sometimes maybe you find why my camera is still going it's probably because your keyframe as you created motion is not locked in specific frames okay so that we have it our schedule for the string which is apply how much we want to be depend on a before and this one is more kind of trial things depending on what you want to achieve. I would recommend for you to use this string 
if you're going like image to image, you can take one of the image that you maybe created before, use it same settings as you have it in another areas, same prompt, and generate and see and use the your CFG scale, mostly about this denoise string. Use this one. Only remember it will be a little bit how much affecting you want to go different values try it and this way you can see how it will keep it similarity or change and this is what usually I do I look on the settings here and after put them inside and reason because if I try to generate here and I have 120 frames I need to wait till all of those frames is completed to see result otherwise you can practice so this is what I recommend for the string actually for you to use we also have it also next is CFG scale, which is tell how closer to the prompt you can be, you want to be. And remember the lower value, the more creative it can be. Your value range from five to 15, it's what they recommend. However, you can put a different ones. Most time I find this recommend range is mostly it's what you want to stay in. Otherwise it will create some very artifacts, but maybe you're going for the abstract, then it will work. Our seed, you remember it's what we have it with how you want to iterate seed behavior. If you want to fix it, random iterate. If you want to change seed after every frame, for example, right here, new seed will creating every frame. If you put a 10, it means it will be changing every 10 frames. And this is actually helpful for consistency or if you're planning specific scenery. For example, if you have a close scenery of the tree and after 20 frames that tree will be gone you can change the seed at this time and create more create uh, options or so on so this is also option can play it notice right here said fixed random it will randomly generate on different frames and so on one thing if you have questions about some of them if you go over you will have it help pop up we can see how it is a little bit more explaining for you to do usually by default, I keep it here every frame, so it's changed. That one also affect this if we have a preset um, seed. For example, if we're going to set up seed not randomly here, this one will override in our keyframes if we have seed iterated. And of course, as always, you have more options. In another options, we also can change different seed on specific frames, but it will touch this a little bit later. And actually a little bit later it's almost now so we have it right here our sub seed if we need it where we can have it our schedule for our sub seed schedule and a string for each set so this is again will apply with each frame if you need manipulation most time i found very few people who actually use this and it's more defined and fine um, kind of animations if you gone to like image to image you created something specific you can always go and recycle and reuse it, seed what you like it. And later you can go to your deform and put it your seeds here to be sure it's follow that specific uh, preset that you like it. Okay, our steps, it is that will allow us to tell how many steps we want to use it. And currently we actually will have it 25 steps by default here. But if we need it, we can change the steps to increase quality or decrease. I notice sometimes with motion or a zoom, you start having like more blur effect. So increasing steps, it will could increase quality as well. To do this, you also need actually enable your scaling. So in this case, if we have a zero frame 25, we can say on frame 12 with approximate maybe um, reduce quality. We can increase to the 55 steps. This is will increase render time, but it will increase detailizations on our images. So same with the sampler. Right now it's a disable and we're using sampler that we selected before. If you want to switch on a middle from one sampler to different, then you can go ahead and use it here as well. And same things for the checkpoint. Notice is as example it's showing model one model two so we can switch and this is work for example if you have it photorealistic and on the middle you want to switch slowly to anime style you can have it for example rpg4 
for your um, photorealistic and anything a model for the enemy you can launch maybe on health frames in this case you transition from one type to another one okay this is our top one mostly most time what you will use it it is the string schedule this is kind of more important a lot to more creativity or closer to the image rest is kind of fun to play around but it's very limited use of this in a little bit more advanced experimenting now we're going to our motion so how i said before with a 2d you'll notice we'll have a very limited uh, motion here available for us just x and y and we'll go look on the 3d okay let's go first things what i want to say it is if you don't understand how some formulas work okay let's go see if we can find by default formula like right here we have it our motion set and let's see when it's everything loaded like for example this zoom formula is by default here and you don't know how this zoom work so what one thing i found it's work very well for me to explain almost any formula besides go in and try read to all this math and uh, the forum see how everything work it can be a little bit boring and take some time the much easier sometimes going to jot gpt copy paste formula inside and just tell explain to me very simple things and you know what I probably it's nice if i type and go ahead put this in and it's actually does a very good job in this case so you know what it does it will increase or decrease amount of frame it's tell you what is constant parameter or how much it will it is what range it will work and also to say this is for example t representation of the time or frames in our case so this is actually easiest way for you probably to know what formula can do if you meet something new and you don't want to actually go and dive inside the map but in general anytime when you see the formula and you see like letter t which is mean time or frame in our case you can say okay this is if a time one second is going and it's meaning the value divided by 30 so we know how often this will change or apply effect to this in this case almost any number that going after or divide it is says okay every two seconds or whatever just apply different parameter and we can change this parameter to deviation to make it faster or slow depending on how we want to approach because by decreasing we can make it uh, longer or increasing number of deviations we can make it faster so this is with the formulas again if you want to learn a little bit more about formulas it will take much longer that we want to spend right now in this video and i will recommend for you going to the links about documentation on the math in deformer i will provide those links down below and if you want to have it crazy fun and see how they work then i'll provide link for you to the calculator demos where you can see create special um oscilloscope or sinusoids and see how that work but this is totally if you absolutely bored nothing else to do and you want to be nerd out as much as you can then you can go to these places but let's go to simplify and simplifications this applies zoom as we zooming into the object and simple is going from um minus uh, from minus one to zero but here's interesting things if we have it one it's mean zoom does not change so it's meaning we are not zooming in at all if we have it one dot one then it's mean we zooming in and if we have it 0 0.9 we zooming out okay here's a potential promise we may have it with a zoom when we don't zoom we'll just stay statically stuff is still be changed but sometimes we may re resolutions or add additional artifacts this is also will depend amount of changes based on how we put it based on previous frame um, this is a little bit kind of trick because if we don't move our camera it's very noticeable very noticeable will be effect 
that our animations is rendered over other things, some flickering and some deformations happen. So if we apply any camera motion, that will help us to hide this effect that is happening that we don't want like move motion. It, what I was being, it's help us to hide imperfections in our animations generated by AI. And here is an example, if we have it zoom, just apply it, but also we have a change motion, you can see how it will create more interesting effect. Of course, this is done also with the synchronizations to the music, which I have a different video for this for those who are interested to see how it was done. But you notice right there, it's a changing and you notice the morphing on object from one to another. And with the zoom, it's actually playing towards us. If it was static frame, again, it's not necessarily will look as nice. Another problem with the zoom, if we zoom in, we start losing some resolution. It's become a little bit more blurry. And you can see on this example right here, see how they clean and nice image at the beginning. I will start playing. Now look, we lost all resolutions. It become blurry in this effect. And this is related to, again, because this, it's kind of increased scale up and our image what is based on does not have this enough information or enough detail information. So to fix these problems with a zoom, we'll need to go inside our string and increase a string for this. So it's how much is based from previous, actually decrease so it's more become creative. Then it will reduce some of those digitalizations and as well increase step of production. So we increase a little bit match digitalization on frame before and on zooming. When we zoom out, we may have a different problem. And that problem will be same as when we move too fast, we can create these lines in our image. So in this case, we need it actually work a little bit again with uh, adding as a warping on the edges and increase create uh, amount of the not based on the frame as we're doing this. Also, you can try tiling. In some cases, it may work as well. So let's go ahead and look on a, another thing. So the zoom. So right here, we're creating our zoom function. We'll have it zero. Next, what are we going to do? Let's say 24. And again, I'm creating, for example, I want zoom be zero here. This is, again, remember what I says about linear things. It does not zoom will stop here. Zoom will go from 1.1 and slowly, slowly going to the zero on going to back forward and slightly back. It's till it's reaching. So it's meaning if I want to have it zero and start there, I need to create a frame before this. So if I put it like, for example, 24 or uh, 23 frame, okay, just one frame before and says 1.1 that before, then I will have it zoom in. Let's put comma. All the way it will zoom, zoom, zoom in, stop, and certainly start zoom out. So this is what will happen here. And this is case, it's probably if you want to have the right motions, keep attention to the frames because they are not precise when you put number. It is with a Pika chip. So it will going in a way of things increasing and decreasing. Okay, this is applied to the zoom. Our angles will apply. Okay, let me show we on the 3D. Let's switch to our 3D view. And you notice we have a different value. So we don't have a zoom because zoom was replacing with translation on a Z right now. And we also have it translation on an X. It's going on our X uh, axis. And we'll have it our Y axis up and down, X left, right and our Z axis away from camera. So same things applied here, only different it is will representing in the pixels. So it's meaning if I need to move 50 pixels, so we'll go to connect frame 12, and we'll go set 50. The, what is meaning? Okay, let me put correct brackets here. Okay, there you go. That is meaning it's not will move 50 pixels. It's meaning every frame it will move. So for example, actually, no, let's go just put the same number 12. So we kind of easy to track. 
it means frame one it will move one pixel per frame two two pixel per frame and so on until it's reach 12 12 pixels per frame if we don't stop after this it will continue with our previous value so it's meaning frame 13 it will still move 12 frames and so on until our animation is done on 120 so it's meaning it will every frame and sometimes if you need to stop animations you want to actually do 13 and in this case we'll need to put it zero and this is meaning from it will slowly accelerating to 12 pixels and after it will stop on frame 13 all the way so if you want to decrease this smoothly increase and decrease then we'll need to put 24 so it's meaning it will go up to 12 frames and after slow going down to zero so no movements this similar will be applied to y if you want it or z to using these frames and you can accelerate you actually can make a camera go rotate faster or slow and moving around because remember we have our position x and y if we move on x this way and z back and forward then we can make our camera almost going around the object in this case and i mean almost around the object because we still just going in two dimension so let me draw a simple thing. So right here, if we have it, our look from top, we have it, our X going from this way. So our camera can move this direction. And next, I can also at the same time tell my camera move to the Z away from where we observe this way. And if we do per frame, our camera motion will be representing not going to left or right if it's do the same time it's this way so the camera will locate it here there there and if we have it properly acceleration for example we have it going from x very slow and increase we can actually create arch and also we can take our camera have it our object on the middle and we can have it our cameras with the rotation of the angle Okay, like right here point towards object so in this case we can simulate way we are orbiting around the object because currently if you look right here we don't have orbiting we just have to rotate our camera and rotate x and y by utilizing this with camera adjustments we can rotate in some cases what i want to say very again simplified way to just showing you how we can do translations for example we can say um, we'll go accelerations with our frame and we can do this with mathematical formulas again we can just multiply uh, and make linear expansion so it's meaning we can say let's go frame 0 1.1 1 .1, and we can multiply this by 2 again this is very primitive things but it's tell you every time it will increase increase progressively or we can also just type and says hey let's do one pixel here oops and moving one pixel and i want accelerate on the frame 12 let's go go to make four pixels slow acceleration frame 24 we want to accelerate a little bit more so we'll put it six pixels and so on we can go till we're doing somewhat ignore those dots i'm just for you and we'll have it like maybe frame 120 we want to accelerate up to 15 pixels so in this case it will accelerate kind of slow and on the z this one on a z we want opposite because we want accelerate a little bit faster so for example we'll start with the frame uh, 15 or whatever we have it and we can go down down create all this our truck and 120 we want to accelerate to zero so this way what is happening we can create this primitive circle yeah, let also let's go we must have it a value or if we don't have value it will start freaking out okay and after we create all these values we can go in a rotate camera so we'll follow here again if you need to see what rotation we want to do it will be on a wide axis yan 
and we can see which way directions we want to do rotate our camera so in this case we can say with our acceleration and speed we want to work on a yeah on this one and pan canvas right right in the degrees so it's how many degrees we want it if we have it 120 frames and we're rotating about 45 degrees remember we don't rotate this 180 45 maybe 90 degrees so we can say 90 degrees divided by 120 and then we can calculate how many degrees we want to do and i am just uh, showing you example like 1.2 frames per each one to 1.2 degrees per frame so we can easily calculate it again if you are nerd out you can go calculate how much you need it but in this case we can program and this is what this motions is needed to create all of these cameras which is actually create more dynamic inside the our animation and then when you can take even a static image like right here uh, video from single frame from me sitting and we can animate this with the camera motions and create more interesting start motion animations with our line our camera to rotate and add more motion to this again right here you can see it's rotation about cameras with just slightly zoom um i think out on this one or zoom in and this is all what creating for us this interesting way also by rotating camera we allow to new pixels coming which is will create additional all this animations inside this is done with 12 frames per second you can see just slightly jiggering and it does not use any frame blending but to create this otherwise we can put it inside the noiser and it will smooth out but again i like to experiment i like to when it's have this kind of true animations motions and right here you can see all these different type of motions where we have the rotations we also have it now camera start um kind of rotation and the kind of a rolling clock uh, anti-clockwise i think yeah it's will a rule yep right here you can see it start camera rolling and this is a rolling clockwise so you have it all these different motion on the camera you applied and it will create much more interesting animations when you create it inside okay so let's go ahead and if you like it many people have it already defined some of this formulas or path and you can copy paste this path as well but now you will understand what they do or how they will affect and if you don't like it remember chat gpt is a great help when you can go copy paste the function it will explain you what is actually do so you can understand which numbers you can change and it's what it's going to do for you okay we already take a lot of time let's go jump to next noise overall it's the additional noise will apply on top and it may increase details however in many cases it just will apply noise on the image on the first image and in some cases it's could help make this kind of old animation or film kind of look usually i leave this by default again we have ability here change our noise schedule some people like to remove or add noise because how i say if you have it in noise you can increase um effect or increase more digitalizations if it's happened and in this case with the noise if you see the digitalization dropping you can also going and increase for example on a frame reintroduce and usually i will recommend reintroduce noise when you have it most movements happen because then you will avoid those lines on the side it will apply noise to them and it will be less detectable because if you do noise on a st static you may have it run in some unusual artifacts so right here for example we have our noise 65 and i will say it's still a little bit static on 12 frames we can go ahead and increase a little bit amount to maybe 0 0.07 um, which is kind of a little bit more again it's as an example and after we slow down we don't need it we need to keep it similarity or we were going to our strings more depend on the image before then we need to drop down maybe it will happen on tw uh, frame 24 then we can actually drop down to 0 0.01 um, maybe even so we can and this is 
will again it will help you to add detailizations to some images i saw some people using different formulas in the videos which is fine and again if you have questions take this formula put it analyze see what it does it's fine but the formula will do this probably smooth increase or decrease um effect of the noise almost any time if noise using like cosinus or sinus inside that is meaning it will go wave and it will be increasing or decreasing problem is you need to be sure it's happen on when you have it most animations done increasing noise and decreasing when motions is decreasing so this is probably the best effect you can achieve with this next it's how many perlin noise octaves it's how many uh, elements creating one octave will create just like almost smooth gradients going more octaves more of them will overlay and so on sometimes if you have too many you may introduce more detailization if you need it so it's meaning you can increase this octave to the six they will create more smaller details and uh, make less octaves will create bigger on this wave so it's your detailization become to the larger size more um, permanent object than digitalization. So this again, you can play with this around, see how it will work for you. Okay, now coherent, and this is applied to our color. It's how you want what you use usually by the default lab. You can apply optionals. Um, this is mostly with when you work with colors, and it's I see hardly people using this. It's more for advanced animations. And in this time, I don't want to kind of go over this because it will maybe complicated some stuff would be going. The other ones, it's I definitely want to point you on anti-blur. And anti-blur, it will increase some of the sharpness on our object. And then you remember when I says when you zoom in, you have this blurriness happen. If you control with anti-blur, you can actually reduce amount of this. And in this case, you can actually get higher or low. And this is based on experiment but be careful because if you anti blur for example on level on a frame 12 okay let me actually put properly comma frame value and if we increase to 0 0.3 which is increased sharpness in this case but if we just stay without moving that will introduce a huge lines and problem and sometimes you may notice artificial lines like a lot of lines very harsh contrast elements then you maybe apply too much sharpness so for example if we go here you can see how sharpness apply object almost to the line art and it's getting sometimes even worse results so just keep in mind the sharpness increasing you need to control it if you don't have it too much noise or other things you probably want to do it normally if you're increasing and it's not does not have a zoom you don't want kind of constantly increasing you want to keep it to lower value on this okay rest the sigma all the stuff it's related and usually just leave them alone as well as uh, depth warping and everything we'll just leave it as alone because it does provide some effect to the borders but in many times the one affected so the next we've gone over this let's go to the prompts and prompts is one of the important parts because it is what are you putting you will have the result i do recommend if you have just a one prompt don't just do like zero because for some reason i find it does not necessarily work very well if you have it one prompt just change a little bit it will reinitiate it so it's meaning you can take it copy over and over let's say it's frame 30 frame 90 and frame 100 or maybe 60 let's go with 60 here kind of on the middle but what i don't leave it exactly same text uh, usually you can put it just anything inside because when it's a process happening it start rereading and recreate so for example just word very will change and it will apply more interesting morphing more interesting effect to this as well it's a keeping algorithm to recreate on the weights to readjust everything okay another very important thing to keep it in mind that with a stable diffusion negative prompts are very important same as importance of the positive prompts but right here you can also put it 
um, one negative prompt for everything, so it's kind of very nice. Same, you can have a global positive prompt that you want to apply to every frame if you need it. And this works very well if you, for example, do as an abstract, put it here, so it will apply to all as a stylization abstract, and then found it work very well in this case. So initial image or video, this is if you want to start your image specifically. And if you look on this example, you can see right here, I have it as a, my single still frame as exam, uh, initial usage. And that is what start and rest is already took from the prompt. So it's not necessarily we'll use it every frame, but right here you just enable use it initial and you can select what you needed image. Just be sure you specify to your image as well. You need to see, set what is string of the image want to apply to your initial frames. It will using them for maybe frame one, two, three, and after based on your string, it will discard this. But it's nice if you want to blend maybe with your previous animations you created. If you want to create like in segments, not just render everything or if you want to use to video or any other thing. So this is your initial things. You can also use it as a video for your initialization as well. Included how many frames you want from this. So for example, instead one image, if you want to use a 12 as initial, you can same blend in. This has worked very well if you covered it before, create another animations, for example, in stable diffusion, and you want link them seamlessly between one to another but you don't want to sit and render, you want to see your results. So in this case, you can take those frames, put it here, and kind of continue from this, so on. Also, you have it your mask, if you're using any masking on your um, video. Notice with the form now, you have a dedicated control net, where you can have it all these additional models that you can use it. I have a separate video about how to use it control net inside of the form, and I'll put link for you down below so you can check if you want to go to more details how to use it control net with the formers. We are one cover hybrid videos in this video. We'll cover them in another ones. It is quite a bit nice and interesting way to combine the videos with other. 3D or another options, and we'll look on this in another, another video, but just keep in mind this is a little bit more advanced. And on the beginning, I would recommend try to play because it is a little bit more confusing. Of course, next and uh, last, we have it, our output, where we have it, options to set up our video and how we output. Notice right here, we have it, our frames. So we set how many frames per second we want to use it. This is will also determine how long is our movie combined with our frame per this and combined with our uh, how many frames in keyframe, how many maximum frames we can have it. So this is combined. This value will be overwritten if you are using the video input, not directly rendered. Just keep this in mind. So this is we set, and it's up to you what you like it. People usually traditional animations 12 frames per second um, 24 it's for the movie some people use the 15 or 30 frames I would recommend stick with the 12 or 24 this is a traditional film animation film and 24 give you quite a bit smooth but you need to render a lot of frames so it's meaning 24 frames per each second of your animation next we have it add soundtrack and this work actually very well and if you use it with combinations like with the music and beat and animations, you can create very interesting music videos. So I'll put it this on the end of the video so you can preview if you're interested in this video. Also, we have it here, our options to skip, make um, GIF or make other format as well. We have it option to upscale. I did not have a very good luck with upscale here, so I'm usually using gigapixel um, video, which has allowed me to add frames, upscale, and it's much easier, very nice work done. But also with gigapixel, sometimes I have it kind of like um, warping effect, so you need to be careful when you use it. But general, that is performed actually much better than inside here. But again, this is personal ex examples, and I'll give you provide also link down below so you can check this as well. General, this is all settings that we have it 
and uh, um, the for most important of course it will be our in emotions these settings is our most important for how camera move because in this case that is what animation is about the motion well thank you for watching this video please subscribe give us thumbs up share this video it's helped me to create um, another videos and if you stick that far right here to the video especially thank you because it does help me when people watch all the way video again thank you have a great day